Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. The Reverend Philip Krepsky is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. The text for this morning is the Old Testament reading, Isaiah 60, 1 to 6. Verse 2 says, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people's. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, dear friends. God has a plan for your life. That statement evokes all kinds of responses from God's people. Different responses. Some against accepting that that can be true, that God has a plan for your life. Some fear by saying that, that we would be encouraging people to be looking into themselves and, and uh, identifying or acknowledging divine direct inspiration instead of people looking to God's word. Other people think, well, if there's a plan that I need to find that by working hard, by focusing my attention on creating goals and achieving those goals. The trouble with all those goals is, is that we might just be self-creating our own plans rather than abiding in God's will. Well, here's the truth from God's word. To the answer of, does God have a plan for your life? The answer is clear. Yes, he does. In Ephesians chapter 2, the great grace chapter that we celebrate, especially in Reformation time of, of the year in October. For it is by grace you have been saved. We know that part. But verse 10 then goes on to say, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance in order that we may walk in them. God prepared all the good works of our life in advance, even before the creation of the world, so that we might walk in them. So yes, God does have a plan for our life, because those good works aren't self-created. We simply abide and walk in the things that God has prepared for us to do, that he has gifted us to do, that he has made possible for us to do in his son Jesus. The key to walking in God's plans is not creating self-reliant goals, but rather abiding in God's Spirit. God's Spirit who gently nudges us, probably most often even imperceptibly, so that we might walk in those good works that God has prepared. Sometimes, for God's people, that can be more of a a direct kick from behind. I think of the Bible story of Philip, who suddenly was led by the Spirit to run alongside the chariot of the Ethiopian eunuch so that he could explain the words of Isaiah. Just like these words of Isaiah today. As Isaiah the prophet predicted Jesus. The common theme behind all of God's plan is simple. Let your light shine that the world may see the light of Christ. In John 1, the apostle John, writing his gospel, wrote about John the Baptist, and he said about John, he came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, but he came only as a witness to the light. And those same words are true of us. We're not the light. But we have come into this world and come into faith in Christ in order that we might serve as a testimony to the light. So in our text, the prophet Isaiah was speaking to the people of Israel, speaking before a time of calamity, predicting the time of calamity, but predicting also the restoration that ultimately would come true long after the people that were hearing those words the first time were alive. 
Isaiah was predicting a restoration that ultimately would only come true in Jesus. And that's when Isaiah the prophet says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That light is Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. And so we know from that that the fulfillment of these words of Isaiah the prophet only come through in Jesus. These words are still finding fulfillment even in our day. As Jesus is present among his people in the church, letting his light shine to us so that it might shine through us. That's the theme of the prophet Isaiah, that God would bless his people so that through his people he might bless not just Israel, but might bless the entire world. And that sharing of light with the world is the purpose statement of every single Christian. I exist so that I might share the light of Jesus. It brings a lot of clarity to life as we search for purpose and try to sort our way through confusing events of life. We are here still here as we await for Jesus so that we might share the light of Jesus in a dark world. The world certainly is a dark place, but then it's always been a dark place. That's certainly the story we see as we read through the entire Old Testament. I had an opportunity to reflect on a bunch of those Old Testament stories in Advent, writing some devotions through that time. The darkness shows up in the fall of Adam and Eve into sin. The darkness shows up as one of their sons kills his brother. The darkness shows up as the world had to be flooded. The world shows up, or the darkness shows up in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. The darkness shows up in the family of Jacob, who would become Israel. As Jacob's family was probably one of the most dysfunctional families that has ever been on this earth. As Israel becomes a nation, it splits because they are dedicated to false god worship. The north, Israel, becomes sacked by the Assyrians. The south, Judah, become sacked by the Babylonians and taken into captivity. They would come back when the Medes and Persians defeated the Babylonians, and then the Greeks would defeat the Medes and Persians, and then the Romans would defeat the Greeks. But all of those kingdoms all had their darkness because they did not know of the light of Christ. There was great darkness in each one of those periods. And it was into that darkness that God placed his light. The true fulfillment of these words of Isaiah is that that light would shine upon them in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Now, in this epiphany season, we can't help but think of the star in the sky and think that that's what Isaiah is referring to. Indirectly, it is true that God placed that light in the sky to guide the wise men, the magi, to bring their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh in order to highlight the true light that was in Bethlehem. And in that coming of Jesus Christ into Bethlehem, drawing those magi from afar, from a foreign land, we see the unfolding of God's plan to shine his light among his own people so that that light shining among his own people may draw all nations unto himself. You know, the darkness of life is not only something that took place in Old Testament Bible times. Our world can be pretty dark too. There are addictions of all sorts plaguing our souls. If we look into our interactions with one another, we argue and devour one another. There's the darkness of a doctor telling us unwelcome news about an illness. 
People we have admired let us down. We let others down. Truth is, each one of us can look into the history of our lives and see all kinds of despicable things that have happened. The depth of the darkness that none of us could ever imagine that we'd be capable of doing, and yet darkness abounds. But God's call to us today through the gospel that he is made to be present in our midst. The call is arise and shine for your light has come. The light, Jesus, has shone upon us in our baptisms and continues to shine in us as we get to shine as the people of God. Some of that shining we do as the corporate church, whenever we gather together in word and sacrament around his altar. Some of that shining we do individually, one-on-one, -on -one, as we bring that light of Jesus into our relationships and serving and caring for people. But all of that shining has an anchor. We shine because God has first shined on us. He has spoken his gospel into our lives, and that gospel has changed us from being children of darkness into being children of light. And now through that gospel, Jesus is in this place. Jesus is in all of our places because he, the light of the world, has chosen to put his light into the dark place. So the Apostle Paul, writing in Ephesians chapter 5, said, For you once were darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. So live as children of the light. Our job as Christians, believers in Jesus, the church, is not just to lament darkness. We can fill up our days doing nothing more than lamenting darkness. We might feel like lamenting the riots that have been in our streets for almost the whole past year now, stretching all the way back to last spring and summer, and now the riots that filled our capital yesterday. All this dark action has its source in the darkness of political leaders who would stir up people to dark things so that they can advance their own agendas. We might lament abortion. We might lament changes of gender vocabulary. We might lament broken families. We might lament the fact that the Christian church is not as dominant over American culture as it used to be. Sure, we can find lots of things to lament. But often our lamenting is us just looking down our nose at somebody else and believing that they are deeper into darkness than we are. Instead, having repented of our darkness and having become children of the light, our goal is not just to point out darkness, but our goal is to bring the light of Christ into the midst of darkness. Being a light bearer of Jesus means that sometimes we have to walk into some pretty dark places so that that shining can begin. So don't be afraid of the darkness, but instead let your light so shine before all so that all may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. All the while by faith we are convinced that we can shine because of the promise of the glory that is about to be revealed in us when Jesus comes back. So, we shine light. We speak the gospel in our churches without reservation. We also speak the light of Jesus to a friend who is dying. We speak the light of Jesus to a neighbor who just lost their child to a heroin and fentanyl overdose. 
We speak the light of Jesus to a person who is lonely. We speak the light of Jesus to someone who feels that all is lost because they lost their job. We speak the light of Jesus into our families, and that doesn't just mean dragging them to church. We speak the light of Jesus into every moment of life, integrating this life we have in Jesus with the simplest things, all the way down to learning how to tie a shoe or ride a bike. Jesus is the light of the world. So Isaiah says, so rise, shine, that's us, shine. For the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will be seen in you. Today is a great day to be alive, no matter how much darkness we can identify for Jesus and his life, his light is always much brighter. So circling back to the first question, does God have a purpose for your life? Yes, he does. So be bright, my friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for chapel. Today we pray for the Reverend Gary Shushke, who served the Lord in Germany. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.